This is not Blooming Alley just yet, but we've got to start somewhere. And I wanted to show you that my Cirola, my Dendrobium Cirola, has brought out another little flush of blooms after its vigorous, vigorous blooming earlier in the year. I have a few more little stragglers. They're not as pristine as they could be, but you know, a little color at the end of August. Why not? And let me get popcorn haruri down. This should be interesting with the breeze. But here we are. Eonopsis popcorn haruri still looking gorgeous. You can see the new blooms opened just in the back here. The one has to be a little bit different, a little bit upside down, but because they're yellowy, they are brand new. And then they fade to this gorgeous little pink and the lip becomes a little bit more freckled. I think it's just gorgeous, that little bit of yellow. Very dainty, very petite, no fragrance but superb, superb. I love this. Sorry, I'm lingering. Let's move on elsewhere. We have to get up there to have a look at these. So this is for all my new subscribers. Welcome, thank you so much for your support and joining the channel. And this is my blooming alley. To the left here is south and we're facing straight to the west. And this is where I have everything that I need to keep an extra special eye on. If I'm acclimatizing orchids that go into the east side where the top guns live that can take the heat and the bright light. This is my acclimatization section and my blooming alley, as the title says. And every once in a while, I come in here, do a quick video and show you what's in bloom even though most of the orchids are already being displayed in the Blooms For You series. But sometimes it's nice to see them all together. So for the end of August, here's what I have. It's a bit thin on the ground, but there are some hidden gems, not clearly and quickly visible to the eye. Like <laughs> my last little Tolumnia Bloom. This is Golden Fire. No kidding. <laughs> but we're going to have some more. So she's branching. And she is, normally lives right in the back there with all of my Tolumnias. So that's where they all live. Lots of light, but very rarely direct sun. And they come forward when they're in bloom. And she had a fantastic spike for the longest time. So I could see her from where I'm sitting in the living room and she'll be here for a little bit longer because of the branching, which is not focusing at this point in time, but there will be more. And then my favorite little one, Hibiki, beautifully gracing us with those charming, charming psychedelic colors and the banging you hear next to me, that is on one side is the gate of the next community that keeps opening and closing. And the other thing is my stepping stool here, much needed now. But yeah, Hibiki still in bloom, no fragrance, but wow, so happy to see this, so happy. And then here's my little Padangus, Dactylothera, still in bloom. It's been over a month now. Look at these. Ugh. I will render a picture. I will find somebody who blows glass and I'm gonna have to get myself some of this in a hand blown glass constellation of some sort. I just, I'm just, I'm in love with these little glass looking transparent blooms. And the fact they are so long lasting is incredible. I do believe they are starting to fade because they were all a little bit more perky upright and now they're sort of starting to flatten out over the edge. But they're just, just gorgeous. What a treat. What a treat to see this one bloom. It's not a strong plant. I was very selfish. 
It's not a strong plant at all, but we are working on it. But I'm very grateful to have seen the blooms. And next to it is Vanda Darwinara Blue. Has now developed a very slight fragrance, very slight, and it does smell like a Neo. So Snow Dragon Ka, if you see this video, here is a better replication of the color. Very hard to film in more sunlight, which I was trying to do earlier. But this is now as close as it can get. And it has developed a very slight fragrance of, yeah, I would say a jasmine kind of fragrance. It's not like it stands out as anything completely different. But yeah, my Vanda Darinara Blue holding up absolutely beautifully. I love it. And then here we have Garen Weaver. Thank you, sir. Plopped a bloom this morning. My resident gecko took one off on his own accord and one more Garen Weaver left. And just wanted to get him as I move my Zimmer frame, my pedestal. Just wanted to get him in as well so that he doesn't feel left out, even though his tendrils are starting to dry up. But that is understandable. He's been here a very long time in my blooming alley. As I mentioned, I had three blooms and I'm ready to actually to also have him back where he normally lives because it's easier to take care of him there and he doesn't go dripping all over my others. All right, I'm gonna do some adjustments and let's go up to the higher elevations. How can I forget before we go up? Make sure you look down, look. I still have the Lemnium Midas in bloom. This is the branching of the first spikes. These two bloomed fabulous during the beginning of the season. And then it sent out some more branches and they are much, much more long lasting than the first blooms were, which surprises me. And yes, I've lost some blooms, so these might now fade relatively quickly, but I have to say they lasted much longer and they're still pretty. They still have a little bit of a golden hue to them, which is wonderful. Little bud doesn't understand should it open or not. You do you. You've done well this year. Much appreciated. Okay, now let's go up. Clearly I am distracted by going up because beauty lives a little bit higher up. That I tend to forget that beauty lives in the middle of the shelves as well. Here's my little summer blooming Phalaenopsis shelf where I have to be very, very careful now regarding the angle of the sun that comes in through that west side. But I cannot do a blooming alley video and not show you my KTC cow, Kichakut, crossed with Corningiana. Look at this. Oh my goodness, she's getting more yellow. Started out pale, creamy, now we're getting into the yellow. Still fresh and now she smells strong. Now she has a very strong fragrance. And I said before that she was like, she smelled like um, pollen wood. You know, when you stick your nose into pollen and there's a, there's a hint of sweetness from the bloom, but the pollen has more of this dusty powdery smell. Now she really smells intense pollen, but there's very, very sweet fragrance behind that. My, very pleasant. Today when I was watering, when I was going around watering, I was thinking, what is that smell? Did I miss something? Who opened up? And nope, that's her. Really showing off her fragrance now. And I've got three, still three, which is nice because normally these summer bloomers, you get one or two and then, you know, they stop and then they bring out another one or two. And she's held on to the first bloom and the subsequent blooms fabulously over five weeks now. It's great. I love it. And then we have my corner survey variety Chatelade. I call her Lady Chatelie. She's naughty looking. But yeah, I've got two blooms left. This year I had six, I think. Uh, one's starting to fade. But there you are. Another beautiful fragrant one. Waxy plastic sweet. Hmm. 
like a Tupperware box that had a child's candy in it and you're going to clean it. And when you go to clean it and open it, you can smell both, you know, the warm plastic PVC, but you can smell the candy that was in that box as well. So that kind of a fragrance. Very pleasant. I like it. Tabasco Tex. In your face. Whoa. Let's get back a bit. Very hard. Tight squeeze here. Tight squeeze. This, this shelf here is new for this year. <laughs> and now I'm like, eh, careful how you move. But Tabasco Tex is also still around and will be for a while, despite the fact that the pollinators have been really having a go. They've been enjoying Tabasco Tex, so there's that to be said. I wonder where the crosses are. I wonder where the pollen landed. And then I have my two sweet memories here. So one is still in bloom. And this is the one that's going on a road trip to the UK. And mine that I now consider mine. This one's not mine anymore. Ah, she's on her way out. But that's okay, we need some more leaves. And she's starting, she's starting on a new leaf. So new leaves need to grow. All right, now I think it's okay. Now let's go up. Scrap that. How am I always wanting to go up? Look at this. Zagarik Wax, Cattleya Zagarik Wax, African Beauty. Gracing the lower shelf because she's too tall to sit on the middle with her nine blooms still absolutely intact. And thank you, Fernanda, for telling me to show her in the shade. Here's me always trying to show blooms in the sun. Fernanda Nacimento from Orchids and Succulents. It's best to put them in the shade to get the right color. And yes, there you have it. That is her color. Smells divine. Still smells divine. I don't see yet anything. Uh, maybe there's a bit of decline coming down here. Or that's just the angle. I don't feel her starting to get floppy and her fragrance is still that port wine. Sweet, delicious, rich body of port wine. Catlia Zagarik Wax African Beauty. My goodness, what a treat. August has been fabulous with her around. The fragrance here, if you're not smelling on the right side here, my summer bloomers she is the one that really kicks it off it's gorgeous can we go up now <laughs> this is the, I, this was not planned i was always trying to get up there i think we can go up now <laughs> after all that trying to get up there i had to bring her down i can't film her up there it did i don't get any color contrast whatsoever but here's dendrobium gyrac horn Still gorgeous in spike. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve blooms for the first spike. Ah, oh, I can't be cross with that. Look at this. This is a deep brown, burgundy, purple. This is uh, incredible. And then the twisted petals and sepals and they get so twisted up with each other they hold on to each other i just think this is a magnificent display no fragrance at all look at them from the back <laughs> how can you not just that is just gorgeous look at that even from behind And then the rows of lips. One, two, three. Look at that detail in there. It's also been open for about three weeks, four weeks now. Doesn't look like it's fading at all. And it has been through some hot winds with humidity drops down to 20% for an extended period of time. So there's Dendrobium Gyrac Horn. Gorgeous. 
Now I'm probably going to get the other one down. We'll see how it works. And still in bloom is Dendrobium lori mortima, supposedly. And probably correctly identified. I thought it was a Leporinum. It was sold to me as a samurai. It was quickly established when I saw the buds. This is not a samurai. But this is what I thought to be a Leporinum. Turns out Michael McCarthy said that it is a Lori Mortimer. And well, you who argues with that? Whatever it is, it is gorgeous. It's its first spike as well. And it has a very masculine fragrance, something you would think uh, belongs in a masculine cologne. So it has that note of sweetness, but then it becomes very, um, the sweetness is not as girly. Like the, it's like a heavy jasmine. I would like to say cedar, but that's too much. But it's a cologne that I would wear because I don't like the girly fragrances. But it's very, very pretty. And whether it's a Lori Mortimer, a Leporinum, or a No ID, I think it's, I think it's pretty stunning. So I'm going to put the uh, lorry back where it belongs and then I'll show you why I keep wanting to go up. <laughs> so this is my blooming alley from the lofty heights of my little two-step. <laughs> and there are the two dendrobiums we just saw. And then up here live what I call my leopard yawn, Vanda leopard yawn, and my Neophoenicia rainbow forest. So I have these IDs. This one was made up by somebody, Olympus 1975 on eBay. This one was made up by me because it also came from Olympus 1975 on eBay and it was called Dragonfire Lip. And I'm like, nope, you're not a Dragonfire Lip. I don't know what you are, but you are a Leopard Yawn. So I have just decided that's what I'm going to call it. Having said that, it's very difficult to forget that up here live two very, very beautiful orchids. And we will have a closer look at them in the next Blooms for You series. Because the second spike has now opened. You can see it. It has to be recorded and dedicated. And spike number eight and nine on my no, spike number seven and eight on Rainbow Forest has also opened. And that up there is spike number nine. And look, it got pollinated. Not by me, but there is a seed pod coming. So the fragrances on these guys are absolutely gorgeous as well. I'm going to go down and back up and let's have a look at it from the other side and then talk fragrance. So there is Leopard Yawn from the other side as well. Beautiful fragrance now. It's very floral. Has a note of um, freshness about it. I would say like, a, you know, um, clothes freshener cloth for the dryer with a spring lemon element kind of to it. I hope that is in focus and next to it with the other view is my Neophoenicia Rainbow Forest. I love it. This one has now developed a, a beautiful summery fragrance. It's gone from being very sweet, typical Neo fragrance to a honeysuckle, I've been told. Frangipani works as well, fragrance. And now it's just a summer basket of goodness fragrance, all of it. Absolutely gorgeous. And um, yeah, I hope this wasn't too long. So I've come back down to earth. <laughs> I hope that didn't take too much of your time. I really appreciate the time that you did take to watch my little August blooming alley tour of what I have in bloom for the end of August. And I thank you so much for watching, taking the time and everything is now just blurry. 
but I really appreciate having you here. If you have any questions regarding the orchids that you've seen here, or if you've noticed something in the background, you're like going, what, what, wait, 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 what's that? Let me know in the comments. I will be very, very happy to delve into an orchid further. If it requires a video, I will do that. And if it's just a quick reply in the comment section, I'd be happy to do that too. But again, if you've seen anything in the background while I've been yapping away, then draw my attention to it and we shall take care of it. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Bye.